Hi everybody, welcome to day two of Everest VVBS. VVBS, that's a mouthful to say. But welcome, we're so excited that you're back with us to join us. Yesterday we talked about how God has the power to provide and our hand motions for that was to throw our hands up in the air whenever we said that sentence. And today we're gonna um, kind of move on from that where uh, you know God has the power to provide and today we're going to talk about how God has a power to comfort. So we're going to sing a few songs and then we're going to get right into it, everybody. Here we go. Take tiny little jumps forward to the front. One, 
now stop. I feel it in the air right now. It's all around, I see it everywhere. It's the power. Yeah, yeah, God's power. It's the power to move and it start. It's the power to heal your broken heart. It's the power. where we're conquering challenges with God's mighty power. On this massive, mighty, monumental mountain, I'm just a little guy. I'm Cliff, and I'm what you call a marmot. Marmots live all over the world, usually way up on huge mountains. Technically, you could say we live way up in huge mountains. That's because we snuggle up and make cozy burrows deep in the ground. Our homey little hideaways dug into a massive mountain keep us comfy and warm when winter sets in. It's cold out there. That human world you live in, that can seem pretty cold, scary, or lonely sometimes too. But God's love wraps around you, kind of like the mountain wraps around me to keep me comfy and safe. In the Bible, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 4 says, He comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort others. That means God uses you and you and you and you to comfort people with His awesome, mighty, and gentle love. God has the power to comfort. Awesome singing, guys. I love the motions to all of those songs. Um, I wish you guys were here and I, I could see you guys dancing, um, but we cannot do that because of, you know, current circumstances. So um, if you have videos of you dancing or pictures of you doing any of the activities, we would uh, love it love it if you would share those with us and we can put those together and make a slideshow at the end of the week. So um, our Bible buddy today, his name is Cliff, and uh, we're our, we're so happy that you know Cliff is our Bible buddy today. He's so soft and cuddly, and you just want to hug him all day long. And it reminds us of how God comforts us. It reminds us of God's comfort. So today, our theme is God has the power to comfort. God has the power to comfort. And when we do, when we hear that line today, God has the power to comfort, we're gonna just kind of give ourselves a big hug. Give ourselves a big hug with social distancing. We can't hug each other, but we can still give you, we can still give ourselves some hugs. You know, pat yourself on the back, give yourself a little, little shoulder rub, you know? So God has the power to comfort. We are comforting. So we are super excited to learn about comfort. We're super happy. And uh, in our memory verse today is 2 Corinthians 1, 4, and I'm going to read it for you, and then we're going to do our motions. Uh, it says, He comforts us in all of our troubles so that we can comfort others. So, here are our motions. Are you ready for this? Are you ready? All right. 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians 1, 4. 
God comforts us in all of our troubles so that we can comfort others. Let's try that again. Okay, ready? God comforts us in all of our troubles so that we can comfort others. Isn't that awesome? That's such a great verse. And we um, are going to talk more about that today in our Bible story. We're going to talk more about Elijah uh, and how God comforted Elijah in his time of need. Uh, so stay tuned for that. We're going to play some awesome games and have some yummy, yummy snacks. I'm super excited for today's snacks. Um, and we're just going to have some fun together today at Everest, uh, BBBS day two. We're super excited. Uh, we're going to pray and then we're going to sing some more songs and continue with our day today. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we're super uh, excited and blessed to be here. Uh, even though we cannot physically be with one another, we're so excited and blessed to have this opportunity to be with each other virtually through VVVBS. And uh, we're just... We are just so full of gratitude to have this opportunity to still uh, learn about you and your word and uh, what you have for us today. In your name we pray. Amen. There's no greater. BBBS, honestly, it's so much fun. So, we're gonna play a game. You're probably like, why does this lady have all this yellow ribbon? And you guys have something to do with this too. Today we've been learning about how God has the power to comfort. God has the power to comfort. And God speaks to Elijah today. And we talked about how cool that is. Now, we are at Everest. Here I am, I'm gonna climb it. I'm gonna climb Everest. I can't climb Everest, I'm too short. It's also not gonna hold me up because it's actually just, you know, 
whatever. But you know what I mean? Like Everest is a mountain, a huge mountain. And together, mountain climbers, they have rope. When they climb the Mount Everest, they have this rope that's really super important because without this rope, they can't be connected to each other. And connections to each other are how we can comfort each other. Like I can comfort my friends because I'm connected to them through my phone, through Facebook, through being in person with them. I can connect to them with a letter. There's lots of ways. So this game is about making connections. So this is what's important about this game. Find a big empty space. This is my empty space and make a design with your rope, your yarn, whatever it is that you've got. I got this because it's thick and you guys can see it. So, now, part of the challenge for this game is to make sure you don't touch the rope, okay? Because this rope, like you've touched the rope, yes. You wanna hold on to it and be careful, but in this game, the rope is like lava, but not really. You wanna make your way across the room or across the ground, wherever you're playing with this rope. Okay, ready? So we're gonna go real careful. Oh, 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 don't touch it. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, okay, we're almost there. Almost. Oh, 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 oh. Ta-da! Now, I didn't make it very big because I only had a little bit of rope, but you can make it however you want. You can use rope at home. You can even add stuff to it. Like yesterday we did the obstacle course. You can do that too. But the most important thing to remember about this is that God has the power to comfort us. And that is so awesome. So have fun. Send us pictures. If you make a cool picture on the ground, like you can make a face, you can even make a picture of Everest, whatever. Whatever you do, we want to see that. We want to have fun with you and see the fun you're having. Maybe you can get a picture of you going like, ah, ah. you can take a video of that. Send it to us and we'll put it together for a super cool thing at the end of this week. All right, friends, have fun. Hi everybody, I'm super excited that you're back at Bible Expedition with us today. Yesterday we talked about Elijah and how God provided for him. We're going to talk about Elijah again today, and a lot has happened in between what happened yesterday and what's going to happen today, and we're going to kind of talk about that, but we're going to talk about how God provided uh, comfort for Elijah, because God provides comfort. Remember the motions? Whoop! You got to give yourself a hug. That's right. Show yourself some love. Give yourself a hug. It's real nice. It's super comforting. So yes. Elijah is back. We left him by the brook uh, where God provided water and food for him. And like I said, a lot has happened between Elijah and King Ahab. So uh, right before today's story, something really big happened. You know that Elijah was uh, a prophet of the one true God. Well, there was like the showdown that kind of happened. It was kind of like a competition with some prophets of a false god and uh, with Elijah, who's the prophet of the one true God. And obviously, Elijah, uh, the God's prophet, was like, my God is the one true God, and he proved them all wrong. So um, this made King Ahab's wife very, very, very angry so angry that she even wanted to kill Elijah. She wanted him gone. She was like, we don't need him. He's just no good. Um, so that must have been a really, really scary time for Elijah. He was so scared. Um, so I kind of want to, I want to picture like his scared face. So on the count of three, I want you to show me your uh, scariest face and you can even take a picture of this and send it to me i would love to see your scary faces so in the count of three everybody show me uh their face the face that they make when they're scared okay ready one two three ah ah that's my face and i make noises too <laughs> um so he was really 
really scared. And I want you to think of a time when you were really scared. Maybe you were scared by a really bad storm. Or maybe there was a person in your class that was a very nice to you and they were kind of a bully and you were scared of them. And I want you to think about that time. Um, so, you know, those, those are really scary times and Elijah was really scared too. He went off by himself into the wilderness to get away from King Ahab and his wife Jezebel. It says that he, um, he traveled for a very long time and Elijah slumped down and just poured his heart out to God. He just poured everything he had out to God. And you know, we have some trees around here and he sat in the wilderness by a tree. And um, I'm gonna read you what it says. It says, I have, I've had enough, Lord. I've done my best, but the king wants to kill me. And I'm all alone and scared. Bring your pro being your prophet is just too hard. Have you ever felt like that? Have you ever had something that you had to do, a task or a job that you had to do, and you just, it was just so hard that you felt like you couldn't do it. No matter how hard you tried, you still felt like a failure. And again, I want you to think about those times, you know, cause that's what Elijah is feeling. He's feeling like a failure. Um, yeah, so uh, Elijah, you know, poured his heart out to God and then he fell asleep by this tree. He fell asleep, and while Elijah was sleeping, he felt a touch on his shoulder. It was an angel waking him up, and the angel said, get up and eat. Elijah looked around, and there was some bread and hot stones and a jar of water. After Elijah ate, he went back to sleep, and then the, the angel woke him back up again and uh, said, get up and eat some more or the journey ahead will be too much for you. Isn't that amazing? God knew what Elijah needed at that exact moment. He comforted Elijah. He comforted him saying, if you don't eat this trip that you're gonna take, it's gonna be too much for you. You're not gonna be able to handle it. He was there comforting Elijah. After Elijah ate again, he finally had enough strength for the long journey ahead. The Bible says that Elijah had traveled for 40 days and 40 nights. That's crazy. That is a really long time. That's like a month and 10 days. That's a really long time to travel. Finally, Elijah got to a place called Mount Sinai. And again, he poured out his heart to, the, uh, to God saying, Lord, I've, I've served the, you the best that I could. I really tried hard and now I'm the only prophet left and they're trying to kill me. He said, this is too much for me. He was feeling really down. He was pouring his heart out. He'd say, God, this is too much for me. God told Elijah, go out and stand on the mountain. I'm going to pass by. And we know from parts of the Bible that no human can actually look at God. So Elijah huddled in a mountain crevice and hid his face. A mighty windstorm came and hit the mountain. It was such a terrible blast that all the rocks tore loose and Elijah cried out, I'm afraid God, you're not here. I'm so scared. Where are you? But God wasn't in the mighty rainstorm, in the windstorm. After the wind, there was a terrible earthquake. The ground shook and rocks trembled everywhere. Elijah thought, God, where are you? My life hurts. People don't like me. They want to kill me. Nothing in my life is stable but God wasn't in the earthquake either. After the earthquake, there was a huge fire. 
Elijah cried, God, God, I feel like my life is being destroyed. Like it's burning up and everything feels so hopeless. And God wasn't in the fire. Then after the wind and earthquake and fire, there was a gentle whisper. And God was in the whisper. And do you know what he said? Three simple words. I love you. I love you. Then he said, you can come out now. It's safe. God wasn't in the terrible windstorm. He wasn't in the earthquake or the fire. Instead, God was in a gentle whisper. And sometimes God wants to speak to us so quietly in a gentle whisper. He wants to comfort us and remind us how much he loves us. God told Elijah he wasn't the only one left who followed the one true God and that there were others. God said that he would send someone to help Elijah and he wanted Elijah to be quiet and to listen. And sometimes God does that for us too. So um, we're going to experience this time of uh, just being still and being quiet and I know that it might be hard sometimes. Um, but that's okay. You know, I feel a little awkward, but that's all right. So what we're going to do is um, I want you to maybe sit somewhere quietly and maybe um, there's going to be a, a section, a long pause in the video um, so that you can, you know, just sit and listen. And maybe you'll hear God say something to you, or maybe you'll just feel at peace, or maybe you just want to sit in the quiet and you know all of those things bring comfort to us they're all super comforting so i just um i'm just gonna pray for us and then uh we can sit in a time of uh silence for a few minutes and if you're done with your time of silence you can fast forward to the rest of the video um and if you need more time you can always pause the video as well but let's pray Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for the gentle whisper. I thank you, Lord, that you have the power to comfort us in our times of need. Lord, thank you for the story of Elijah. We, um, we pray that you will just show yourself to us in these next few minutes, Lord. In your name we pray. Snack time, snack time, gotta eat my snack time, snack time, snack time, snack your snack your snack time. Remember friends, don't eat all your snacks at once. You just eat the ones that are for the day. And today we have a granola bar. Mmm, it's yummy. And today we've been talking about how God has the power to comfort. Now, granola bars, they're kind of hard. Now, mine's a little bit soft because it's been um, sitting in the uh, sun a little bit too long. Mmm. Mmm, mmm. It's a little hard, but it's also sweet. Just like God, God can be strong. Like rocks are hard, right? Rocks are really, really hard. And I'm making a mess. Rocks are really hard and they're really strong, but God's love is strong like a rock, but it's also sweet. So when we eat your granola bar, I want you to think about that. Think about how God's love is strong. Think about how it's sweet. Think about how he comforts us because God has the power to comfort us. I'm feeling good, good, good in a crazy way. God's love changed me more than I can say.
Imagination Station Day 2. Um, we have our snow, our fake snow from yesterday. Woo! It's so fun to play with. Um, also, you might notice that I have a headlamp on. Uh, these are your prizes for registering before July 4th. So you have these little headlamps on, so you can um, put your headlamp on if you want and join me. I'm going to wear it all the time. Um, so I just wanted to, you know, have that little acknowledgement to the headlamp. Also, um, I have some prayer rope materials here on the table. Um, if you don't remember uh, watching the video about the prayer ropes, uh, we have some prayer prompts for you guys. And they are in your daily overviews and the first one you can do before you watch the videos and then you can do the second one after you watch the videos and complete the activities um, so basically you just write your responses to the prayer prompts and then you just tie it to um, to your rope and by the end of the week you should have uh, a long rope uh, kind of like what we have hanging up uh, and it's just a reminder of what you've learned this week so um, if you haven't already done yesterday's you can go do that now um, yeah and then don't forget to do today's so today we're talking about comfort and how God has the power to comfort and do you remember what our um, our motion is for today God has the power to comfort do it on the count of three ready one two three if you're giving yourself a hug Good job, you did it. Um, so what are some things that bring you comfort when you're sad? I want you to think about that. Do you, um, or when you're sad or when you're sick, do you like to maybe talk to your mom or you know, get a hug from your mom? Do you like to wear uh, your favorite sweatshirt or your cuddle with your favorite blanket? I love um, cuddling with my favorite blanket when I'm sad. I also like to, I like to hug my mom. My mom helps me um, just feel comforted when I'm sad or sick. I'm trying to undo these, this bubble. If you have not already taken the film off of your um, your bubbles, you can do that now because uh, it might take a minute and get the little wand thing out. Um, so these are in your VBS boxes. Day two, imagination. Um, we have some bubbles here, and you know when you blow bubbles, what do you what do you think when you blow bubbles? What do you think? It's relaxing, right? It's pleasing. It's comforting. You don't feel stressed when you blow bubbles. Nothing about bubbles is stressful, except for right now because I'm trying to open this. Um, but you don't feel stressed. You don't feel sad when you blow bubbles. I have never heard of anybody say that they 
feel sad when they blow bubbles, right? Um, so I want you to take this out and you can do this outside. Hopefully it's warm where you are today. And I want you to blow bubbles outside, not inside, not inside. And I just want you to think about how God comforts us. How God comforts us, because he comforts us when we're sick and when we're, um, when we're not feeling well or when we're sad. He comforts us. Kind of like how the bubbles are comforting us right now. You know, when you're stressed or you have a lot going on, just take a second and blow your bubbles. <laughs> so you guys uh, can go outside and blow your bubbles and uh, make sure to take pictures of this and send them to us. And we would love to use them in our videos. Hi, everybody. I hope you enjoyed the second day of... Wow, our tree fell down. That's okay. Um, I hope you enjoyed the second day of VVBS. Uh, we had a ton of fun. We hope you did too. Uh, again, uh, remember to send us your pictures and videos so that we can bring them all together and create something awesome with them. And remember, today uh, we talked about how God has the power to comfort. And yesterday, God had the power, or he still has the power, <laughs> to uh, provide. God has the power to provide and God has the power to comfort. Those are the two things we've learned so far this week. Come back tomorrow for more, and we are super excited about this adventure. We are climbing Mount Everest. We're doing it together. Uh, join us tomorrow to, uh, to you know, participate in some activities and play some more games, and uh, it's going to be a great time. So see you tomorrow.